Penn State football leads at the half, 20-6 to six against West Virginia in Morgantown. This is a halftime update from Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. And just a quick reaction here, and there's a weather delay in Morgantown now, but to get straight to the point about this Penn State team, they're clearly better than West Virginia. The offense just needed to find its rhythm. It, it took some time, but as you can see, there is a clear gap between Penn State and and West Virginia here. Drew Aller is having himself a day with 199 yards and three touchdowns, and that's in just the first half alone. Trey Wallace is already over 100 yards and looks like a clear-cut wide receiver, clear-cut number one wide receiver. And for Penn State's offense, that was very slow to get started, right? This is a brand new offense. That it, This is a complicated offense. It takes a while to get used to Andy Kotelnicki's system. And look how quickly Penn State just needed one quarter to get adjusted, to feel comfortable with Kotelnicki calling the plays. And it translated to Drew Aller throwing for nearly 200 yards. And we've seen so many different dynamic elements from Penn State, whether it's Aller as that dual threat runner, Bo Prabula coming in in a two quarterback system, the running backs being involved, involved in the pass game. Catron Allen has a receiving touchdown in today's game. I'd like to see more out of the ground game, but you want to know why that is. Penn State, because West, West Virginia is daring Penn State to throw the football. West Virginia and Neil Brown, their game plan was to say, we don't think Drew Aller can beat us through the air, even though he did that last season, right? In, in, a, in a Penn State offense that struggled. Last season, they didn't learn their lesson. This season, they're doing the same thing again. They're selling out for the run. They're game planning for Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen first, and that's that's understandable. Singleton and Allen are quite the dynamic duo in the backfield. But Drew Aller is making them pay. He's carving up that defense left and right. Eight of 13, 199 yards, and three touchdown passes. So West Virginia, pick your poison. Sell out for the run if you want. Try to contain Singleton and Allen. Fine, but you're going to pay for it on the back end with Drew Aller finding anybody that he wants to. And it's been primarily... It's been primarily Trey Wallace in this case, who was establishing himself as the true number one. And we talked about that. We said that Wallace was going to be the number one wide receiver, but it's he's good. He is good. Now, West Virginia secondary isn't the best. So we'll see with, again, comparable competition, how Trey Wallace is able to handle that number one resp receiver responsibility. With Omari Evans emerging, Omari Evans is that big play. This is how the offense was going to become explosive, and you've already seen that. Andy Kotelnicki has already established, and Penn State's offense have already registered three plays of 20-plus yards. That's three explosive plays in the first half. And then you get Omari Evans on the reception for over 50 yards. That is the key. Omari Evans is the key to this offense going from good to great to elite because you need that home run threat wide receiver. Trey Wallace is all around, but I wouldn't call him that deep threat. Julian Fleming, security blanket, kind of like Tyler Warren, right? Both of those guys are reliable in short to medium distances. But then there's Amari Evans who can take the top off a of defense. And you already saw that right there. And he's winning, winning the jump ball. Joel Klatt is saying that it, it was a it was an offensive pass interference. The West Virginia defensive back grabbed the jersey of Evans. So I feel like that's a 50-50. Two players are fighting for the football, and Evans wins. Okay, that's clearly just as much defensive pass interference as it is an offensive pass interference to me. That's two football players trying to go after the pigskin. Okay, but besides the point, now West Virginia's offense, there, it's been, been quite a mistake-filled game. Even though there hasn't been capitalization on those mistakes, you can see that Penn State having to get a little adjusted there early on, but they found the rhythm. West Virginia, Zach Frazier at center from a season ago, who is now with the Pittsburgh Steelers, was taken in the second round. You can see how valuable he was to Garrett Green and the West Virginia offense and how they were just able to motor along. West Virginia being down by two touchdowns here is a big deal. Penn State gets the football to start the second half. There's a weather delay. So we'll see how much time, if that, you know, kind of shifts a little momentum here and there. But you have a two-touchdown lead against a team that cannot play from behind. West Virginia, it, that that is the Mountaineers' kryptonite. 
they are not going to be able to come back from a two touchdown deficit as long as Penn State continues to churn clock, and they can and they will. If West Virginia is going to sell out for the run, Drew Aller will just throw it over, uh, toss it wherever he wants to on the football field to move the football. Kotal Nicky said that I'll run the ball 60 times, I'll throw it 60 times with the quarterbacks. It doesn't matter. It's about moving the football up and down the field. They don't, they're not boxed in. But West Virginia needs to play ball control. West Virginia needs to run the football and control the time of possession. Now that they're playing from a deficit and they don't have true superstar wide receivers going up a, a potential top 10 defense in Penn State, they've held West Virginia to six points. They have the looks of a top 10 defense, but the say it's a long season, right? But they're going up against an elite caliber defense with tons of future NFL talent. It is not going to be easy to throw the football up and down the field to come back when you don't have those superstar wide receivers. When Garrett Green is a dual threat quarterback and not a passer first. He's a runner first. He's not a passer first. All of that's going to combine together. They lose the receiving running back. I hope Jaheim White's okay. I didn't want to see him go out of the game, but that is beneficial for Penn State because he is that alternative receiving threat for West Virginia, and he's I, he's either not going to be 100% or out of the game. We'll see how Penn State adapts. We'll see how West Virginia adapts, but the cards, the deck is stacked against the Mountaineers going into the second half, and Penn State is going to key back to that 2017 Michigan State game where they had that long extended period of time where they had to go to the locker room. There was the weather delay, and Penn State ultimately ended up losing that game. I think James Franklin's going to remember that and learn from that experience that they need to find a way to stay sharp so that they don't come out flat into the second half and end up giving up a lead. But that was a different Michigan State team, and this is a West Virginia team that is not poised to do something like that. They just don't have the system to do it. Penn State looking great, firing on all cylinders now that they're in a rhythm. The question marks were never around the defense. The defense was always going to do its job. Penn State's offense was the question mark. They're the key to this team being a true college football playoff contender, and it's on display today against West Virginia. Final note that I'll make, offensive line I'm very impressed with for Penn State. They have not allowed a sack by, uh, by West Virginia's defense. And I was told that West Virginia's defensive line is, you know, they're not necessarily elite, but they're above average. This is a good, solid group. They led the Big 12 in, in, in total sacks. I tried to say it. West Virginia's front seven is not great. They are not good. They are below average. And for the defensive line, according to the analytics, they were one of the 20 worst groups a season ago. They did not make enough changes to make this group have an impact. Against select opponents, they will. But the likes of Penn State and probably the upper echelon of the Big 12, not going to be the case. I'm impressed with Penn State's offensive line, though, because they received a lot of criticism. They were one of my biggest concerns going into the season. The matchup is favoring them right now. So again, long season, but I like what I've seen. Drew Aller has been protected. He's been upright, and he looks confident, and it shows. Nearly 200 yards, three passing touchdowns, and Penn State with a 20-6 to lead. My name is Zach Seiko. I'm the host of Locked On Nittany Lions. Thank you for checking out my halftime update here, and we'll see with the weather delay when Penn State versus West Virginia returns what's going to happen here, but it should be a good second half for Penn State with now, now can go into cruise control to take care of this game out in Morgantown.